Hi, I'm Matt from Camlock, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how a gas strut is made. Just to explain, this isn't the process of assembling a gas strut, which you can see in our video, How to Make a Gas Strut, using this link here. Instead, what I'm going to do is show you the components that actually make up the gas strut itself. First, we start with the rod. The rod is made from precision ground and polished carbon or stainless steel round bar. The surface is then treated to improve the wear and corrosion resistance. Usually the rod will be longer than the stroke of the gas spring and shorter than the length of the tube. Which brings us onto the tube. The tube is either powder coated carbon steel or stainless steel, high integrity tube suitable for high pressures. The internal surface finish and the tensile strength of the material used are absolutely essential for the life of the strut and the burst pressure performance. Then we have the guide and seal package. Our gas struts use a plastic composite for this. The guide and seal package provides bearing surface for the rod, preventing the escape of gas and the entrance of dirt or other contamination. And the piston assembly? Depending on its use, the piston assembly can be manufactured from zinc, aluminium or plastic. The purpose of the piston is to control the rate at which the spring extends and compresses. It also stops the rod from being expelled from the strut. For this reason, the integrity of the attachment of the piston to the rod is absolutely critical. You do not want the rod coming off with 200 bar of pressure behind it. Then the end plug. The end plug is used to seal the end of the tube and is where the tube end fitting is attached. In the case of Camlock gas springs, this is also where the variolith valve is integrated. The variolith valve allows the release of nitrogen gas from the spring, reducing the output force. Here's the nitrogen gas. The spring will be charged with nitrogen gas at a pressure of up to 200 bar. To give this some kind of context, a car tyre is around 2 to 3 bar pressure and a factory compressed airline around 6 to 7 bar. We use nitrogen because it's inert and non-inflammable, which means that it doesn't react with any of the internal components and won't cause the strut to rust from the inside out. Again, an important consideration when dealing with these pressures. Finally, we have a small amount of oil. The oil provides lubrication of the seals and rubber components. It also gives the damping at the end of the stroke, which slows the strut down and prevents damage to whatever the strut is attached to. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, please use the comment section below. And if you found this useful, please remember to like, subscribe and share.